Fire protection is this week's topic. Hi, this is Jim from RV4x40.com. Welcome to the channel this week. We're going to talk about tire protection and some specific topics about that. Tires are, of course, very important, whether it's on the tow vehicle, the towed vehicle, the trailer, whatever it is that's involved with RVing. If you're driving down the road with an unusually heavy load for most consumers anyway. Our combination rig, for example, weighs in at about 39,000 pounds when you count the RV itself, the motorhome, as well as the Jeep we tow behind it. So it's a lot of weight. There's a lot riding on those tires, so you want to make sure that they're well taken care of. And there are a lot of channels on YouTube that will tell you a lot about tires and weights and balances and things like that. I'm not going to go into that detail. I will just point out that uh, tire wear with a RV, with a trailer, or the, in our case, the motorhome, is very seldom based on tire wear. Uh, we're not like an over-the-road truck that might put, I don't know, a million miles a year or whatever it is on a, on, a, on a vehicle driving down the road, and they're going to go through several sets of tires. We're talking about a situation where a lot of RVs are only even a small few thousand of miles per year. Most might be 15,000, 20,000 miles per year. And so the tires are going to age out, as they say, before they wear out. Your tires are going to have a four-digit number on them, which is a manufactured date. There are four digits there, two of which are for the year and two of which are for the week of the year. So you can tell uh, when your tires are made and when you buy them, you want to make sure you look at that so you're getting tires that are relatively fresh, something like up to maybe three months, four months, uh, is acceptable given the time it takes to make the tire, distribute it, and get it into your hands. Much more than that, and you want to be very careful before you even buy the tires because, again, you're likely going to have them age out before they wear out. So the question becomes, what can we do to make sure that they don't age out any quicker than they have to. The biggest culprit with tire wear, besides the oxygen in the air, which oxidizes everything, uh, is actually just the sunlight, the ultraviolet light that can get on them. So there are two things that you can do to help take care of that. We're going to talk about a couple of them here in a second. The biggest problem is the ultraviolet light, sunlight, that just does destroy the rubber over time. So there are two things you can do about that, both of which I think are important. Uh, the first one, the easiest one in some respects, is a product. Uh, this is uh, 303 Aerospace Protectant. It's a spray-on uh, material. It's used to protect rubber and vinyl and some other things like that. Uh, you can use it on the roof of your RV in a lot of cases as well for ultraviolet protection there. But what it is, is you want to apply it to a clean tire, so you'll have to clean the tire off first. And you apply it relatively sparingly. You do not want to get the tire totally wet. In fact, it tells you to wipe off excess with a wet towel and then wipe it completely dry. It, it will not dry by itself. It's not designed to do that. But you cover the, uh, the outside surfaces of the, in our case, four tires. You might have more tires exposed depending on the configuration of your vehicle. But either way, you don't have to put it on the inside of the tires. You put it on the outside that's facing the sun. And you do this every three to five weeks is what the instructions say on that. We try to do it every four weeks or so and keep the tires well protected uh, from the ultraviolet effects that you're going to see no matter what you do. The other and more uh, significant way to do it, and it doesn't work when you're driving down the road, but a number of companies make uh, tire covers and they come in different sizes, shapes, and configurations for how you put them on. And I'm going to talk about that uh, today as well. The covers that, that we're using on this windy day uh, they're going to billow a lot, but the covers we use are uh, from a company called, uh, get it right here, uh, Snap Ring Tire Savers. They come in white and they come in black. Uh, I will caution you that when we bought these, and I'd had some other experience with, uh, with tire covers that they, they sell you a size based upon the uh, size of the tire, but the only thing they seem to take into account is the diameter. And some of these tires, depending on the aspect ratio, might be wider than others. So 
I did buy one size larger from this particular company for the uh, uh, installation on, on this part. So if you're going to be stopped for more than a couple or three days, uh, time frame is up to you obviously, but it does take uh, time to put, put these on. I find the snap rings are about the easiest thing you can do in terms of a tire cover that's going to go on. They're relatively easy to do and I'll try to get that on the video to show you how they go on. But the important thing is to know that you need to think about that for longer term storage. Uh, it's a better protectant than the 303 is going to be. You don't have to reapply it. Stop for any length of time, it helps to put these on versus just depending upon the 303 spray, which has to be reapplied on a regular basis. Well, if you're younger and more agile, you might not want to use a stool. I find for things like this, uh, my bones creak a lot less than, than otherwise. So it took me two or three tries to get this down where it works fairly well. But uh, the snap rings, I'm looking for the end of it, uh, are basically in my hands. And so you want that roughly centered over the tire. And you put this on and basically look, there's a seam here, probably can't see it in the camera. Put this seam running around the edge of the tire. And then the snap rings, literally are that, they simply snap behind the tire. You can do one of them and then uh, take the other one, put it behind the tire like that. And that's it. That's all it takes uh, to put these tire covers in place. Uh, as I said, they come in white, they come in black. Uh, previously, I had the ones that had to be fastened with a bungee cord type of arrangement behind the tire. And uh, I did not like those. It meant getting down on the ground and using, a, I actually used one of the, uh, the sticks that we used to pull down the awnings uh, over the windows with the hook on the end of it to pull that uh, bungee cord around and through the right spot and get it hooked. So that was always the pain and it meant crawling on the ground and that kind of thing, which is uh, more work than sitting on this stool. So that's it. That's all there is to put them on. Taking them off is the reverse. You can reach around, take the snaps from the bottom, pull those out, take the whole thing off. They fold up relatively flat. Uh, they are large. There's, uh, these are large tires, of course, in this RV. And so that's a consideration you might want to think about. That's the tip for this week. Between the uh, 303 Protectant, which I think is a great product, I've used it for several years, and I know it's extended the life of my tires, and these covers, which are a relatively recent addition for us for this coach uh, on this tire, size tire. One of those two methods uh, should work for you, and I encourage you to do that. Also, speaking of tires, if you haven't uh, thought about it or heard about it, a tire pressure monitoring system uh, is an essential piece, as far as I'm concerned, of RV life. I'm not going to go into details. Uh, we use one from TST, Truck System Technologies, I think is what that stands for. And uh, it has a nice color display, but we have 10 sensors. There are six on all the uh, tires on the coach and then two more uh, sensors uh, on the Jeep. Of course, it has built-in sensors, but those are only useful if you're in the Jeep. So altogether, we have 10 sensors on the, the two vehicles going down the road. And I don't really have to think about it. They will monitor for uh, pressure leaks, uh, slow leaks, as well as blowouts. Uh, and incipient blowouts is what you, want, what you want to find is before your tire actually blows out, you hope to, to get a warning, but not guaranteed, but it certainly gives you a lot of information as you're going down the road you would not otherwise get. So we hope you've enjoyed this week's video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Click on the subscribe button down below. We'd appreciate it if you would do that. And come back next week when we'll post another video about our travels uh, in an RV and the things we found that work and some that don't work so well. In the meantime, join us in the highways and byways of America and say hello when you see us.